We are dissecting Scrum to take a look at it piece by piece. Today it's the turn of the Retro, aka the Sprint Retrospective. Hi, my name is Gary Strawn. Welcome to Development That Pays and welcome back to this mini-series on Scrum. If you'd like to catch up with catch up, catch up with previous episodes, this is the link that you're looking for. The Sprint Retrospective is the last of Scrum's five events. And if Sprint Planning marks the beginning of a sprint, then the Sprint Retrospective marks its end. It is, as the Scrum Guide reminds us, an opportunity for the team to inspect itself. If you saw the episode on the Sprint Review, you'll know that we talked about the three pillars on which Scrum is built, namely transparency, inspection, and adaptation. In the Sprint Review, we inspect and adapt the increment with the aim of improving the quality of the product over time. In the Sprint Retrospective, we inspect and adapt, well, pretty much everything else. One of the cool things about Scrum is that every two weeks, the clock restarts and we get to play the game again. And this gives us the opportunity to get better at playing the game. And Scrum doesn't leave this to chance. The Scrum Guide is very specific about the purpose of the retrospective. It lists these three points. Inspect how the last sprint went with regards to people, relationships, process, and tools. Like I said, everything but the product. Identify and order the major items that went well and potential improvements. And thirdly, create a plan for implementing improvements to the way the Scrum team does its work. Create a plan, that's the adapt part of inspect and adapt. Talking's great, but what we need is to take action. Talking of taking action, if you would like a copy of the cheat sheet that I've designed to go along with this mini series, then getting your hands on a copy is simplicity itself. In the description below, you will find a link. Click that link, follow the instructions, and it's all yours. All right, where were we? Something about taking action. I think I better check in with the Scrum Guide. By the end of the sprint retrospective, the Scrum team should have identified improvements that it will implement in the next sprint. The next sprint? So soon? Although improvements may be implemented at any time, the Sprint Retrospective provides a formal opportunity to focus on inspection and adaptation. What do we know so far? Well, that the Sprint Retrospective is a meeting, a meeting that happens at the end of each sprint. Who attends? The Scrum Team, and in this case, only the Scrum Team. Think self-organizing team. How is the meeting run? Well, the Scrum Guide says nothing at all about how it should be run. Um, reminder, if one were needed, that Scrum is not a methodology, it is a framework. So it's up to us, or rather up to the Scrum team, to choose its own method, or indeed to pick and mix from a number of different methods. One common approach is the start, stop, continue method. Very briefly, each member of the team grabs some post-its and a sharpie and jots down thoughts from the current sprint or under the general headings of things that the team should start to do, that the team should stop doing, and the things that they think sh the team should continue to do. They do this individually at first before moving the post-its onto a whiteboard talk through each of the items to try to identify common themes and to come up with some action items. Question of the week, what's your favorite sprint retrospective method? Let me know in the comments below and keep watching the videos in this here mini series. You might want to start with one of these two.